Chapter 32. Door. Eric's first thought was Griffin's window. He could climb out to the narrow portion of the roof, figure out a spot to jump down without breaking his ankles, then hobble away. Eric's wasn't crazy about that option. There had to be a better way. The front door was at the bottom of the stairs. Eric's mind seized on that door, the gateway to his freedom. He could probably run down the stairs, noisily as anything, fling the door open and go. Man, just go. Mr. Connolly wouldn't have time to react. Eric crept out of the room. He listened from the top of the stairs. Silence. Wait. No. The sound of the television. Some sitcom show with a phony patter and candid laughter. In his stocking feet, Eric took one step, then another. Fortunately, the top half of the stairs was obscured by a wall, but the wall gave way to an open banister about midway, heading down. Eric would be totally exposed. He heard the shuffle of footsteps, the sound of a refrigerator opening, a glass being set down on the table. Eric could picture huge Mr. Connolly sitting at the table, elbows splayed, still in his tattered bathroom. A mental map of the house formed inside Eric's head. From the midpoint of the stairs, there was a clear view into the kitchen. That was the danger area, but it only lasted for about four steps. He took a deep breath. He decided that the best plan was to swiftly and silently walk down the stairs. Don't hesitate. Don't look around. Don't so as much glance into the kitchen. Chances were Mr. Connolly wouldn't even see him. The guy's face was probably buried in a bowl of raisin bran. His heart thumped loudly like a John Bond in drum solo thundering inside his chest. He began his descent. Eric made it to the bottom of the stairs when his father called, Griff, when did you... A jolt of adrenaline shot through Eric's body. He hit the door running, pulled open the inside door, pushed the screen outside screen door, bang, clang, but it didn't open. Panic set in, and he heard the chair scrape across the linoleum fro- floor. The brute left heft of a man laboring to stand. Locked! Locked! There must be a switch, a thingy, a something or to push or to slide her. There! The door swung open. Eric jumped to the front of the porch steps and flew, absolutely flew down the street. He turned left down one street, cut through a couple of yards, then turned down another street, then another, never looking back, just running hard, not caring who saw what, just putting as much distance between himself and the Connollys as possible. He found himself back at the little pocket park where the place where Mary had bought, brought him. Eric collapsed on the bench, having to catch his breath, heart racing, mind a blur. He peered through the dense thicket of bushes, flipped open his cell and punched numbers. Mary surely had to see him flying from the house as his hair were on fire. Hopefully she turned on her phone, breaking the connection before turning it on again. Eric? Mary? Are you okay? What happened? Yeah, 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 I'm fine. Did he come after me? No. He stood at the front door a minute, looking baffled. Then he scratched his butt and went back inside. Eric left, giddy and relieved. That's when he finally noticed his stocking feet. My sneakers! Eric had left them in Griffin's room.